it's here and I can just open it. <laughs> but um, I'm also a little nervous, honestly, because, you know, we've been crafting this instrument and a lot of conversation of what I would like the perfect, the most exciting guitar to be, what would be in it. You know, so we started these Zoom calls and calls 15 and inch size. trying to think what makes a good instrument a good instrument. And that's a really interesting question. Okay, so, um, I can't even sit down. This is so exciting. Um, this is a collaboration I did with a luthier in Europe, uh, Luca from Zetling Guitar. And this has been more than a year in process and it just arrived. Uh, I'm usually not really excited about gear, um, but this is just just incredible. I mean, we've talked so many times Here and one this is the end yeah, result. Yeah, it yeah. just arrived and I was like, I was, yeah. I was like, okay, I want to share it with you guys because I know you've been a part of this process. So, let's check it out. Wow. Is it real, I mean, I'm just... Do I'm you so feel excited. Evan took a shower, so she feels like she's coming to the home. I'm so excited. To welcome in the new. Oh yeah, yeah. Why do we work The first step we need to figure out is if everything's okay with the guitar, because I guess there is a chance that you know something went wrong in transporting it from Europe. So it's coming from Slovenia. He's based in Slovenia and uh, we're in New York. So that's kind of far. Let's hope. Is it real, baby? Underneath this cover, there is this instrument that I'm so excited about, it's just ridiculous. But, you know, it's been, it's been yeah, over a year, a year and two months since we started this project. So, it's, you know, in reality. And, yes. It's sort of a personal moment, but I'm gonna share it with you guys, because you've been here all along, so I think it's, it's there. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, more rap. Okay, this is this is literally the first time I'm holding this instrument and I've never been more excited about an instrument. It's real. It's here. I'm worth it, creating universes with the verses I emerge with certainty and worship for the churches in my own temple. I'm the alpha and omega of my own temple. Yeah, this world's mine. I am the moon and the sun. Create this hip hop planet with every pun. Speak it to fruition with just my tongue. This is where I belong, right between the lyrics of this song, right between the groove, the verse, just find me in the lyrics or a hearse, with music I create the universe where I belong, just listen to my word within the song, these lyrics flowing through me, you can hear it in the music, know that this is where I belong. So, 
what's going on here? Question, how long do you have your guitar for? Uh, I have my red Gibson for over 12 years now, so I play that exclusively, only that guitar, that was also the only guitar I had and owned for many, many years. Um, and yeah, now, um, you know, things have changed and this is kind of like my, my main, new main instrument. Um, but I'm really curious, how long have you been playing your instrument? Please drop a comment and we'll see who has his instrument the longest. <laughs> this has been over a year in process between Zeitle guitar and myself. This is a crazy guitar because it has crazy optional sounds that you can make also MIDI, percussion, piezo. I'll go over the details in a second, but I just wanted to kind of share with you guys why this happened and, and you know, what's going on here. This project really started about a year and a half ago when we started talking about guitars and we said it could be cool to collaborate. And I was like, yeah, of course. And he asked me, what is my dream guitar? And I was like, my dream guitar. And then we hopped on a call um, for about an hour and a half where we just talked about guitars, which I definitely like. I guess first and foremost, I just like the sound of this instrument. Um, it's like, it feels good. And it took me a few weeks to understand how to get that sound. And, and I'm still figuring it out but I feel I'm closer to what I want to imagine from this guitar. And I'm just stoked about, about the options and, and where it will you know, take, take me and the music. And, and yeah, it's, it's really, really fun. Sometimes I'll, I'll try to check, you know, just like playing some scales or arpeggios or different patterns that just to like make sure that I'm like as comfortable as I am with my with this instrument as, as I was with the others you know or the other and like sometimes I'll be like ah oh, wait this is not comfortable why and where am I placing the guitar? And then, you know, I'll try to understand and figure it out. I think there is a super interesting cycle between the sound of the instrument and what we play and how comfortable we feel. This is why I think instruments in general are an important factor of the craft. Now, it doesn't need to be fancy, it doesn't need to be expensive, you just need to like it. And I've played awful guitars, but you know, with a little tweaks, you love them and you can make great music. Um, so it doesn't really matter. But what matters is that you pay attention to these details. And there are quite a few things and quite a few variables that can make a guitar really, really sing and happen. Just two days ago, I fell for the first day. I was like, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. And this is also an important kind of thing to talk about because a lot of times people get super excited while getting a new instrument and it takes time. You know, it's not, um, it's not, it's not gonna be instant, I think, at least for me. It just takes time and I think when you find an instrument that you like, um, it's really important to understand what the variables are that you can adjust and there are quite a few For me, it's been a couple of weeks of just like trying to figure it out very specifically and I'll talk about it in a second But I think the process of working with a new instrument and understanding what are the variables is super important for us as musicians because we basically can really articulate more accurately what we want and how we can achieve it. And it has to do with the strings, it has to do with the action, it has to do with the truss rod, it has to do with your hand position, how thick this guitar, how big and wide it is, etc. etc. So there are quite a few things to be aware of. They're all flexible, you know, what's your strap height, you know, little things like that that actually affects the positioning of our hands and, and musicality, music. Oh, if you like this kind of content and want to support me, probably the best way to do that is uh, checking out the Patreon. And uh, yeah, thank you. This collaboration happened because I found a person uh, based in Europe, Luca, um, that 
shares this enthusiastic, you know, passion for music and guitars like myself. And we talked about what makes a guitar an instrument that is just like a blast to play on and what, you know, how can we kind of push the envelope a little bit. So this guitar has a crazy range. You can start from this F, but you can also hit this F. And quite comfortably, I'd say, because you can actually see this cutaway, really, really deep cutaway that allows me to actually play shapes and chords in these registers, which is really unusual and I'm totally not used to it just yet but I think you know once I get the hang of it it will be so much fun to like explore this other range it's almost having like two guitars because with my older guitar it had a D but actually like you couldn't really play it like you your hand kind of stopped here so you couldn't really play chords you get a new instrument and you have to understand it will take time like you really need to learn and try to ask yourself these questions like, okay, why is this instrument comfortable? And what is happening with this instrument? Which kind of brings me to um, asking specifically uh, a few questions that I think are really helpful in my um, exploration of why a guitar is a good guitar and why an instrument is a good in instrument. And also what can we do to make it better? If our instrument is cool, but not as cool as you want it to be, what can we do? So here are a few variables that are um, really helpful for me to think about. Start with a simple one. So first of all, um, what gauge strings do you use? You know, so you can use 13s, 12, 11, 10, whatever you want. But the question is again, what gauge strings do you use? Cause this ha determines a lot of the, you know, how hard it is to play, which also brings, you know, more sound maybe to the guitar. But it depends on what you're looking for. Then you have um, the height of this bridge, right? You have the bridge height that determines how hard it will be or easy as well. You have the truss rod, it's basically a metal bar that determines the you know angle of the neck, which also makes a big difference. Then you have this piece here, this tail piece, that if you raise it, you actually have less tension, which I raise it quite a bit. You can also string the strings backwards, like I'm doing here. So the string goes from the other side. I'm doing that also to get a little less tension and I think a little more sustain, which is really fun. You don't have to do it, but you can definitely adjust these variables. So you have the truss rod, you have the strings themselves, you have the height of the bridge, you have the height of this tailpiece and also the tailpiece itself when I got the guitar it had this um, kind of um, you know wow thing I don't know how you call that uh, which was awesome we talked about about that with the luthier um, and I really wanted it but the thing was that there was this metal thing that kind of bothered my hand so the first thing I did day one I basically took that piece off and just put on a, a, a classic tailpiece just a basic thing, but it actually helped a lot because my hand position was already better. Um, also, you know, having the strings here pretty high in terms of between the bridge and this tailpiece allows me to actually place my hand a little bit to get more control. Um, the height of the strap is also going to be affecting, you know, a lot of things and the angle of the guitar. Different guitars have different size, right? This is, I believe, a 15 inch guitar, which is smaller than what I had before. So again, naturally, because I play a lot of time on that instrument, I'm very comfortable with it. So all of a sudden, um, when I'm, you know, using a different instrument, it just feels like it's in a different place. So all these little things actually um, affect a lot how we feel. And you know, so some days when I started working this guitar, I was very frustrated, not because of the instrument, I'm just not used to it. And then, you know, I was like trying to understand the variables. I was trying to play with people and see like how I feel. And you know, after a couple of weeks, again, two, two weeks or so, two and a half weeks, now I, I would say a couple of days ago, there was this like first click that I was like, okay, I think I'm starting to understand. So. Again, I'm just saying it's a process. Uh, last night we played a show uh, with our new band, actually, Mink. It's really fun. It's uh, with Sophia Urisa, Adam Neely, and James Mushler. Uh, amazing um, musician, artist, and very good friends. And yeah, we played our third show, and that was the first time that I felt kind of better with this guitar, and it was the second time I think I played with this guitar as well in the show. Because yeah, it's just like you're not used to an, a new instrument. It takes time. so. 
I guess try not to feel bad about it and the same way that it's a it's a process of exploration with music you know it's a process of connecting and understanding the variables when you work with a new instrument um, it also taught me a lot about you know where do I want to place my hand you know where is my wrist kind of staying and where is the movement coming when I'm playing I think um, I find it very helpful to kind of have the wrist a little bit stabilized not harshly glued but just kind of stable so the motion is more from the wrist and less from the fingers you know everybody does his own thing there's no one right answer but in general I feel like having some stability and point of reference helps to keep the consistency and the accuracy while playing uh, your instrument we have the neck pickup which has this kind of warm sound Even if I go high, it's pretty clean. Like the notes still kind of sing. We also have the bridge pickup. So that has this kind of like brighter sound. Maybe more. Uh... But what's for me really, really interesting is, you know, using this warm sound, for example, but adding the percussion. So I have this, this kind of option of, of, you know, there are these percussion things, uh, pickups basically around uh, the, the framework of the body that also has a sound. So I can kind of mix that. Um, Something that's really interesting for me is taking, for example, the warm kind of pickup and mixing that with the percussion option. So this is this is the volume for that percussion. Um, and I can either kind of loop certain ideas uh, just in percussion, but also just check out the sound versus again, it could be more subtle or. or harsher it depends on the volume that I choose I kind of like the idea of just blending it a little bit to get this a little brighter color at almost more acoustic for a second um, and again of course if I'm doing loops and stuff like that for example I guess what I really love about this instrument is that the the options for mixing and creating sounds that are within the realm of guitar are almost infinite um, because yeah we can mix 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 <laughs> I can't say it never I could never say this word there's also the single coil option for all these so you know if you take the this sound then single coil bridge one so it's a little brighter and then a single coil so almost kind of stratty I'm just like a little brighter you know just kind of punchy versus maybe the more kind of softer beautiful mellow sound that I love uh, and of course there's a tone knob as well you can open it up completely so it's even brighter but I like it a little it really feels like this guitar can do so so much because except the, the pickup we also have the piezo and I'm, we're using here the GraphTech piezo uh, this is also MIDI so these two buttons are well these three buttons are MIDI and this click here kind of shifts between the regular pickups and the piezo so check out the sound again this is just the regular pickup this is the piezo so it has you know it's active here and you have this like kind of like yeah acoustic sound you know just really 
really cool. I, it just like it's it's another instrument all of a sudden. Let me try and do something. See, there's there's a lot of options of sound um, kind of embedded within the guitar, but wait for it. So we're talking about all these sound options of you know pickups and different kind of colors that we can mix with the piezo, not the piezo, the percussion, no percussion, and they're all kind of like able to live in coexistence. There again, three outputs from this guitar. Um, but I think one of the big things for me with this guitar is also the MIDI. Um, so the the MIDI system here is really good, which is really freaking exciting. There are two reasons that it's very exciting for me. First, um, yeah, with this new band that we're working with, Mink, um, there's a lot of sound kind of scapes that we're creating. So the idea for me that you're playing a chord and then maybe not a chord, and then the organ is coming in. This is just, just insane. And what right now I'm doing, I'm using two separate amps to have like a little bit of separation. And when we're playing shows now, I'll do the same thing. So I'll still keep the guitar sound. And you can control the balance if you want more MIDI, right, or less MIDI, maybe just that like a touch of MIDI, but mainly guitar, or maybe, you know, a lot of MIDI and less guitar, or just MIDI, you know, so all these options are valid. And it's not just organ, it's just the option to have these different sounds. One more thing. I actually don't know the presets yet because I just started working with this, but so let's see what we get. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's just. What is this? Yeah, it, you see what I'm saying? It just like. I mean, yeah, you can, there's just so many sounds in <laughs> Layer of interest for me is, except the sound, there's also the visuals. So I've started this project also about a year ago, um, and a friend of mine, Jeff Whitehead, actually wrote a software translating the MIDI signal and kind of enabling mapping visuals, um, videos and, and pictures into each one of the notes. There's another friend um, that is helping out, uh, Ivan Dion now, um, that we started trying to collaborate and we did the first show um, yesterday where we had a projection connected to all this situation. So basically there is visual information coming from the instrument, from the guitar that is being translated into visuals. Here's an example of the MIDI to visuals. <laughs> Um, again, this is just the beginning steps, but for me, like, it's a bigger project that hopefully in a few weeks or a few months, you know, when we're playing more shows, like, we'll have a projection and you can real time see different elements of what we're playing in, in shapes and colors on the screen and it will be interactive with the whole band. So Adam will have like a MIDI pickup and James, the drummer, um, uh, has this uh, uh, Sunder house, you know, so he, he'll have a MIDI output as well. So we're just trying to connect all these kind of dots and, and trying to figure out how to create something that is, is interesting uh, and, and exciting. And uh, this is one of the reasons that this guitar is so exciting. 
uh, just like the options are, are really wild. And I feel like it's just super versatile and super like... Super exciting um, for me to to write and, and work and practice and trying to understand where I'm putting my hand and how to make it work so yeah it's just it's you know it's a process like i said of understanding and trying to connect to the instrument and figuring out where we're putting our stuff and maybe also a, a good time to you know do things better and more accurate and be like oh, okay my hand needs to be this way and the position of the strap needs to be here etc etc so yeah i'm just stoked about it that's the truth um and um yeah, I just wanted to share it with you guys to show you the stuff and uh, I hope you like it. Thanks so much for listening. I hope this was interesting and, you know, somewhat helpful in the conversation about how to, you know, deal with a new guitar, what are some of the variables that are taking place and how we can adjust them. I'll see you guys very soon.